Hey there, math friends, welcome back. Today, we're gonna to be talking about properties of addition. Properties of addition are a set of rules or strategies that your students can use when adding two or more numbers. And the reason why we use and teach these properties and strategies to our students is because it helps figuring out and determining calculations much more easier when, it, when we get into solving more in-depth and complex problems. So if you're ready, don't forget, hit that like button, give this channel a subscribe, and let's dive in and get started. Hey y'all, welcome back. My name's Marcy Bernithi, and I am the teacher author behind SaddleUpForSecondGrade.com, where I love helping teachers just like you fall in love with math all over again. Today, we are going to be talking about two different properties of addition. The first one is going to be commutative property, and the second one is going to be associative property. So when it comes to introducing new strategies and concepts with my students, I always start out with creating an anchor chart. Now, on our anchor chart, I don't fill out all of the information at one time. So commutative property is the first property of addition that I always introduce. And so we might on day one, we will talk and discuss about what commutative property is and we will complete the commutative property portion of our anchor chart only that day. Then we might practice that skill for a few days. Then when it's time to introduce associative property, then we will add that section to our anchor chart as well. And as I am creating, our whole group anchor chart, something that I always, always do is I have my students create a matching one in their journal. What I love about this is it allows them to actually be working while we are creating the chart together. So it, they are helping and taking ownership in our learning. It also serves as, as a way for students to look back on what they have learned or if they need an example on how to do something, they can always flip back and look in their math journal. So let's talk about what these properties of addition are. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is commutative property. Now your students are probably already familiar with this, but they might not have ever heard the actual vocabulary term commutative property. I know when I taught second grade, instead of using that phrase, I always called them turnaround facts. So your students are already going to be exposed to commutative property, they just may not realize it. So what's commutative property? Commutative property is when you take an addition problem and you can change up the order of the add-ins, but the sum remains the same. So. An example that you can use with your students when introducing this concept. Let's say you go to the grocery store and they buy a Coke and a bag of chips. They walk up to the counter, they are ready to pay. Does it matter if the worker, if they scan the Coke first or the chips first? Is the amount going to remain the same? You can have them turn and talk, you can have them discuss their answers, and most of the time, yes, their answer is going to say, no, it doesn't matter the order in which the items are scanned, the sum or the total of the Coke in the bag of chips, it's still going to be the same. It works the same way with a commutative property. When you are adding two numbers together, it does not matter the order of the add-ins, the sums remain the same. So there's a couple of different ways that I like to practice this strategy with my students. So what I would do is I would actually call four students up to the front of the room. Two students are going to hold up a piece of paper with a number on it, and then two students are going to hold a piece of paper that has the plus sign and the equal sign. So what our kids have to do is they have to put each other in order. So let's say 33 plus 17 equals 50. So you could have kids that are sitting down, you could have them solve, or there's several different ways that you could do that. Then what we would do to demonstrate the turnaround fact or commutative property is the kids sitting down would have to direct my two students that are holding the add-ins, they would have to 
flip flop them. So then instead of it being 33 plus 17, it would become 17 plus 33 equals 50. And by them actually seeing that the two numbers, it doesn't matter the order in which they are in the problem, it the sum always stays the same. Another one of my favorite ways to practice this strategy is just by using dice. Give your students a set of three dice. If you don't have enough for each student to have three, give them one dice and then they can roll the dice three times to create a two or a three digit number. You can have them roll the dice to create an addition problem and then they can solve for the sum. Then what they have to do is they have to show the commutative property. They have to flip flop the add-ins and solve to see if their sums are the same. And another really fun way that you can practice this is with an activity I like to call drop and add. And these activities, these can actually be found inside my third grade guided math unit, which I have linked below in the description of the video. But what your students are going to do is they have a piece of paper and it has a number grid on it. They are going to use a pom-pom ball to drop their pom-pom on to the number grid. And whatever number it lands on, they are, they're gonna drop it three times to create a three digit number. So they'll drop it three times, write that three digit number. They'll drop it three more times, write that three digit number, and then they're gonna solve for the sum. Then they are gonna show community property. They are going to flip flop those add-ins and solve for the sum. They know that if they get the same sum with both equations, then their answer is correct. Now let's talk about associative property. You are going to use associative property when you are adding three or more multi-digit numbers. So when we use associative property, there are parentheses involved. And this is probably gonna be the first time that your students are exposed to parentheses in math. So just that's something to kind of be aware of that they are going to be working with parentheses. They are going to group, it doesn't matter which two numbers they group in the problem to add first, the sum is still going to say the same. So for example, we have 31 plus 11 plus five. It doesn't matter if they add 31 plus 11 first, or if they add 11 plus five first. It does not matter the order in which the parentheses are placed, your sum is still going to remain the same. One thing it's really important to remember when introducing associative property, especially since this is the first time that your students are going to be exposed to using parentheses in mathematics, is that when they see parentheses in the problem, they always want to solve the numbers in the parentheses first. So if the parentheses are around the first two add-ins, these are the numbers that they solve first. If they are around the last two add-ins, those are the numbers that they will solve first. So it's extremely important to share with them that it doesn't matter the order, but whatever the parentheses show, those are the numbers that are being solved first. So now let's take a look at an example using associative property, using some task cards and a work map. So with this particular activity, what I would probably do is I would use this either during a whole group lesson or during small group practice with my students. So how it works is I am going to give each student a task card. Now, if you wanted to have your students, let's say if you're working in small groups, if you wanted to have all of your students working on the same problem, you absolutely could. Then what I would do is I would just hold up a task card and then instead of having it, like you can see in the example here, instead of having the task card placed at the top, you could have them just rewrite the problem on the card that you are demonstrating, that you are holding up. So here what they're gonna do is they are going to write the problem shown on their task card, and then you are going to walk them through the steps of how to solve using the associative property. So here with the example, they are using 27 plus 78 plus 61. Now on this particular task card, 
they are going to solve 27 plus 78 first because those are the first two numbers and they are the numbers that the parentheses are around. So remember when using associative property, they are solving the numbers in the parentheses first. Then to solve using the associative property, they are going to switch the parentheses and they are going to rewrite the problem as you can see how they did in this image below. So they're gonna rewrite 27 plus 78 plus 61 and instead of solving 27 plus 78 first, they are going to redraw the parentheses around 78 plus 61 to solve for the sum. Now let's take a look at another example using associative property. In this particular example, students are going to be working with an interactive notebook activity in their math journal. So they are given an addition problem on the top of the flip-flap and they have to rewrite the problem shown using associative property. Now, underneath the flip-flap, this is where they are going to solve for the sum using any particular strategy that they may have learned previously. So let's take a look at this first example. They have 27 plus 72 plus 36. They are going to solve 27 plus 72 first because those are the numbers inside of the parentheses. When you add 27 plus 72, you are going to get 99. Then they will take 99 plus 36 to solve for the answer. Once they have their answer, then they can rewrite it on the top of the flip-flop as well. So there you have it. Those are just some simple activities and ways that you can introduce and practice and reinforce the properties of addition. If you are looking for more resources, be sure to check out my third grade guided math unit. I've dropped the link in the description of the video. If you have any questions at all, feel free to leave me a comment and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.